My name is Thomas Gustafsson and I'm the Chief PKI Officer at Key Factor. I've been working as a techie since you know, the late 70s and with open source for a couple of decades now. In 2002, I founded the EGBCA open source PKI project because I discovered Bouncy Castle back then. I'm David Hook, uh, Vice President of Crypto Workshop at Key Factor. Uh, I've been working as an open source programmer now since uh, the late 80s and uh, I was one of the founders of the Bouncy Castle project which uh, had its first release in the year 2000. So one aspect why open source is important specifically for security I think is the notion of uh, security by obscurity which of course generally means very low security which history has proven over and over again uh, but there are of course, many other aspects to it as well. Yeah. So the uh, yeah the ability, especially with cryptography, the ability to review the actual source code when required is is a big help. Um, you don't get that with a proprietary solution, obviously. Uh, the other thing, of course, which is useful is just the uh, size of the user community and also the um, ability to get in touch with the developers behind the project if there's a decent framework to make it possible for them to do so. I think the uh, size of the community also speaks to the interoperability aspects, right? Since cryptography is such kind of fundamental technology for almost everything out there today, it has to just be interoperable uh, wherever you are. Yep, that, that's very true. And it's, it's weird too, because, um, well, maybe weird is the wrong word, but it's, it is the size of the community that actually allows you to flush out all those sort of weird interoperability edge conditions. Have occurred because I mean, while there's the cryptography algorithms themselves, of course, there's a range of cryptographic protocols that are built on top of those. All of them standards, and all of them implemented according to the standard. All of them different, um, and it's been able to find those differences and isolate them before they become a serious issue uh, in your broader community. That's one of the important things about doing an open source development. Many of our customers you know, start out small uh, with maybe experimenting. Some things don't fly and doesn't become anything, while others you know, become uh, mission critical, long-term, decades long deployments, uh, which has to run and operate uh, continuously in, in the organization. And uh, for those kind of projects, that's when the, uh, the customers need the uh, supply chain security that comes with having you know, Bouncy Castle and EDBCA working together for uh, yeah, a long, long time. Yeah, I mean, it's funny you should say that because I mean, the big motivation behind getting uh, a formal framework behind Bouncy Castle was uh, there's always that joke about if you're an open source developer, how do you pay your mortgage? Um, we, we were a group of open source developers that discovered that our banks were using our open source software for securing our mortgage. At which point we realized, of course, that everyone was having a problem with the fact that we weren't able to support it uh, full time. Um, so it became necessary for us, for our sanity as much as anything else, to actually put in place a framework where it could actually be supported properly uh, with a sort of commercial level of support that people require to actually doing enterprise applications. It can really save a lot of time having to, you know, access to the expertise. I certainly know that from when we started working in the beginning of the 2000s, that how much time it sold me to actually be able to speak to someone who knew a lot more about those things than I did. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny you should say that, and, and thank you. but. Um... The thing is, uh, yeah, a lot of our support engagements actually start with an email from a manager going, my development team has just spent weeks trying to do X. And X is inevitably something that one of us can deal with in 10 minutes to an hour tops. Uh, and again, it, it just goes back to the fact that the development team really needs to be concentrating on what they're actually trying to do, rather than the fact that they need to introduce a security component to it. I don't fully understand how it all works. Thank you for listening. Thank you.